So from here, the next thing that I wanted to highlight is how to remember what each of these nerves innervates as far as muscles go. Um, and we're gonna focus on the three main ones, radial, median, and ulnar nerve, because for the CHT exam, it's really, really important to know the muscles in order from proximal to distal that each of these three nerves innervates. So we're gonna talk about the acronyms to do that. I'm gonna switch out my notes here. So now we have the radial, median, and ulnar nerves. The acronym for each goes like this. Uh, from proximal to distal, starting at about upper arm, humerus level, sometimes just above the elbow. That's, that's kind of where you need to know going down into the fingers. So we have, please forgive poor Florence. All Florence felt before, and you're not gonna write a B, you just need to know the word before to make this make sense. Passing this profusely freaking all-inclusive, over-the-top, final exam, we're not gonna write E for exam, was, we're not gonna write W for le was, lucky. And this is the beginning letter for each of the muscles that the median nerve innervates, uh, starting with the pronator teres and going all the way down to the lumbricals, one and two. That's how detailed we're gonna be. Okay, so that's your acronym. We'll fill in the muscles in a minute. Radial nerve, the acronym is bees eat everything everywhere all and then we say e z so three e's at the end it's an easy way to remember it and the acronym for the ulnar nerve is a little more fun we're going to say for future meals always order fluffa and i don't know what fluffa is but hopefully it's something really good okay so the way that you're going to fill in each of these muscles um, is really rote memory. I wrote this out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, but it does kind of start, sort of start to make a little bit of sense. Um, and the first letter of each muscle kind of helps clue you in on which muscle you should be writing in which area. So we have our pronator teres, we have the FCR, we have the palmaris longus, FDS, AIN, which is the anterior interosseous nerve, FDP 2 and 3, FPL, PQ. Then you have your the special one, Palmer sensory branch. Okay. Flexor retinaculum. So we're including some extra structures in here, but it's important to know what order they're innervated. Abductor pollicis brevis, opponent's pollicis, FPB, and you need to know short head, and lumbar close, one and two. Okay. Radial nerve, we're going to start with the brachioradialis. So, insider tip, what's the first muscle that the radial nerve innervates after it leaves the plexus, for example? Hypothetical question. Brachioradialis. That's why it's important to know them in order. Then you have ECRL, ECRB, supinator, extensor digitorum, EDM, ECU, abductor pollicis longus, EPL, EPB, EIP, and the sensory branch. of the radial nerve. And I like to remember this one in order. We know we're gonna start with the brachioradialis and then ECRL, ECRB, supinator, pretty easy to remember in that order. Then we start with our Ds, ED, EDM. Then we start with our Cs, ECU, abductor pollicis longus. But then this is what's interesting to note. Up here we have ECRL and ECRB. Once we get down to the EPs, we have EPL and EPB. So LB, LB, it's kind of nice to keep them in order that way. And the ulnar nerve, FCU, DP, four and five. The median cutaneous nerve, abductor digiti minimi, ODM, 
Conan's Digity Mini. Sorry for my handwriting. FDMB. Lumbercoles. Three and four. AP. And FPB. Deep or long head. And then last A is all your inter -ossei. So we're not just talking muscles, we're also talking other further branches of the nerves here and in what order as they go from proximal to distal throughout the upper extremity. And why this is important is because you might get a test question that talks about the nerve that innervates um, the lumbar call on the first and second finger. And the point of the question might be, well, which nerve branch does that come from? And if you have this memorized and then also written out on your note sheet, you can very easily see that the lumbar call for the first and second finger are innervated by the median nerve. So it just takes the guesswork out of it. It um, prevents you from second guessing yourself because if you can just memorize this, and then ride it out, you never have to think about it ever again while you're taking your test. Uh, a couple of things to note on how I filled in all those names of muscles. Um, a lot of it's rote memory, but you know your L's are lumbricals, so I go from left to right and I started lumbrical and I knew it's one and two, so one, two, and then my only other L, three, four, fill that in. I know that the FDP is split and some of the fingers with the FDP are innervated by the median nerve and some are by the ulnar nerve. So when I found my FDPs um, and filled those in, I know that it goes two, three, four, five. So just kind of keeps things in mathematical order. Lumber cool one, two, three, four, and then we find our FDPs and we go two, three, four, five. That way you never mix them up. And I filled in things that were kind of oddballs first, like A for all interossi, I knew was the last A in my whole list. Um, I always remembered that our R or our B at radial nerve is brachioradialis and just kind of memorize them in order. As you go through the acronyms over and over and over, it gets easier and easier. So when I sat down with my test, the first thing I drew was my plexus and I went into some detail and labeled what muscles each of these nerves innervated, including these up here. And then I went ahead and filled out my detailed list of median nerve, radial nerve, and ulnar nerve, and what muscles those innervated. And this helped tremendously. So that's the end of part one. I can show you what I had on the rest of my note sheet for the test in part two. All right, thanks for watching.